Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Costello. Um, we're gonna kick off unit 11 with uh, some graphing. And some of you guys are like, yes, I love graphing. Some of you guys are probably like, oh no, I don't, not a fan, that's okay. So we're gonna be graphing absolute value equations today. We need to review what exactly absolute value means. So don't worry, I'm gonna do a couple of these with you because I know you're probably like, wait a second. Okay, so number one, um, we always treat absolute values kind of like parentheses. So we do everything inside those absolute value bars before we talk about what absolute value actually means. So um, inside I have four minus eight. Well, four minus eight is negative four. So right now I have absolute value of negative four. Remember that absolute value means um, distance away from zero. So how far away is negative four from zero? Well, it is four spots away, right? Can we have a negative absolute value? Can something be negative spots away from zero? That is, that is a no, friends. So, right? Cool. Same thing on A, right? On A, I have negative nine plus 13. So go ahead and, no, I'll just do it. It's fine. Um, go ahead. So negative nine plus 13 is four. So I have four inside my absolute value bars. So what number is four spots away from zero? Well, that's really easy. It's just positive four. Now B, B is a little bit different. B has a negative sign on the outside. So I have 12 minus three inside. So I need to do that first before I do the negative. So the negative is just gonna hang out outside. And then 12 minus three is nine. So I have absolute value, negative absolute value of nine. So again, we treat this like parentheses. So we're gonna do this part first. So let's put our negative in the front again. So absolute value of nine is nine. Guess what, the negative just stays there. That's the only time our absolute value is allowed to be negative. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how to graph these. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna graph what's called the parent function. Now the parent function is like our OG function, like we're not doing anything to it, it's, it's the original. So, um, on our original, here's what I like to do. I like to make a little table of X's and Y's. So I'm gonna give you the X's. The X's we're gonna use are gonna be negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And we're just gonna fill out our table just to kind of see what exactly is going on with our function. Now, when we were, if we were in person, um, in my class, I make my class do this on their own to kind of discover what that form looks like. I'm going to walk you through the first one, okay? So we're going to plug in negative 2 for x. So right now I have absolute value of negative 2. Well, negative 2 is 2 spots away from 0. So we're going to go ahead and put a 2 right there, a positive 2. Negative one, well, negative one, remember it's absolute value of negative one. Negative one is one spot away from zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a one right there. Now for the rest of these, you can kind of keep going with it and go, okay, zero, absolute value of zero is zero because zero is zero spots away. And then absolute value of positive one, well, one is still one spot away from zero. So not bad. And then same thing with two. Two is still two spots away from zero, okay? Now our table might look a little weird, but we are gonna trust our table. So these are our points. So we're gonna go to negative two, positive two, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, two. Now I'm gonna connect all my dots. And I made a little V shape with my line. That's what absolute value looks like. So V for value, okay? When you're doing the absolute value, you have a V shape. Those bars are straight bars, so we're gonna draw straight lines. Now, on number three, 
Number three kind of looks like B, where I had the negative on the outside and all my absolute values ended up being negative. So I'm still going to give you the x's, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now this time I am going to trust you to go ahead and fill out your y's. Remember that the negative makes the y negative, so um, it's going to be very, very, very similar to your last one. So go ahead and pause your video and finish the table. Okay, here's my table on number three. So all I did was plug in one of them. I plugged in a negative two, so absolute negative, absolute value of negative two. Well, absolute value of negative two is positive two, but that negative stays outside. So once I got one negative, I realized all the other ones are gonna be negative. So that's what I did right there. So we can go ahead and plot our points. Negative two, negative two, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, negative one, and two, negative two. And guess what? I still have my V shape. It's just an upside down V. We're going to talk about why it's an upside down V in just a second, but these are our OG guys, okay? We're going to kind of keep these Vs in mind um, as we go through these. So something we're going to talk about, we got a bunch of vocabs, and then we're going to graph a bunch of these. Your domain is going to be all of the x values of the function. So go ahead and write x values in there. And then the range is going to be all of the y values. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in a second too. Okay. So we are going to be working with something called vertex form. Vertex form is going to be your best friend. And if it is not your best friend, you need to accept that it's going to be your best friend. Because let me tell you, life is really hard if you don't understand vertex form. So um, we have something in here... This should be familiar, H and K, kind of. I know that unit was not our fave, um, but it's going to be okay. The H and K is going to be the vertex of your V shape. So go ahead and write H comma K where it says vertex. Now the vertex is the little peak down here, right? This is with the vertex where it kind of splits. It's like the middle of it. Now H, H is going to move your graph left or right. Now, when we did our HK unit, we had to remember, change the H. So if you want to write that down, do that, change H. So it's always going to be the opposite of what we see. Don't worry, we'll work on it. K moves your graph, graph up or down. And remember, we always keep K we don't have to change K, which is very nice. All right. Now, A stretches or compresses the graph. And I'm, we're going to kind of talk about when it does that and when it, you know, when it does each of those. So it's either going to make it really, 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 really skinny or it's going to press it down. It's going to be super wide. Okay. Last year, I called it thick and um, kids got mad at me. So I won't do that this year. Maybe in my class. I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling. Okay. The graph is reflected. We're going to write reflected right there. If A is negative, which we kind of looked at in our OG functions, right? We had some negative guys and it flipped it. Okay. So if you want to put flipped instead of reflected, you can totally do that too. Either way, it's totally fine with me. Alrighty, now let's kind of put this to the test. So let's look at number three. We're going to do this one together. So my, um, right here, I have H and K. Now my vertex is my H and then my K. So inside for H, it looks like that two is negative. Remember to change it, change your H. So it's going to be positive two. And then there is nothing for K. If you really want to put plus zero, you can if that helps you. So my vertex is going to be at two zero. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you up here, you guys, your A value is kind of like your slope. 
Okay, remember slope, we're gonna kind of use that a little bit. Okay, so on number one, three, the reason why I wanted to point that out is there is no A value. Well, there is an invisible little one right here. So my A value is one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our vertex at two zero right there. And then we are gonna go up one over one, up one over one. Remember when we did slope and I said, listen guys, you cannot go to the left. You get to break the rules in this unit because you have to make that V shape. So we also have to go up one left one, up one left one, couple times. And then there's my V shape, there we go. Okay, now domain, the domain is always, always, always going to be all real numbers. This is the easiest point on your test. And the reason why is we have to ask, what are the X's doing? Well, our arrows, our arrows are pointing left and right at the same time. So that means our X's are getting both bigger, or sorry, bigger and smaller at the same time. So that's what makes it all real numbers. Now your range. The range are the Y's, so we need to ask ourselves, what are the Y's doing right now? Well, the Y's, those arrows are pointing up, so that means the Y's are getting bigger. So we're gonna write Y is greater than or equal to. And we're gonna talk about the smallest Y that we have, which is usually our vertex Y, which is zero. Okay, that's the smallest Y that I have. All right. Why don't you guys try it? I know we've only done one, but give it a try. Okay, go ahead and pause your video and do C. If you're really stuck, don't worry. You can unpause your video and you'll see my work. So go ahead and pause your video and do C. All right, there's my graph on C. So if you look at H and K, my H was positive three. Remember, we change our H. So positive three is now negative three. And then that K is zero. The X's, remember, the X's are always getting bigger and smaller at the same time, so that's in all real numbers. And my Y's, the X's, are, the arrows are pointing up, so the Y's are getting bigger. Okay. Number four, this time, look what we have. When we have H and K, there's nothing in there with the X. The H is always with the X. So our vertex is now going to start at zero. And then our K, remember we keep our K, so three would be the other point in my vertex. So zero, three is right here. And let's see, A value, I still have an invisible one in the front, so I'm still gonna be going up one over one, up one over one, and breaking the rules to make the V shape. Up one left one, up one left one. Boom, boom, V shape. Now remember, this is the easiest point on your test. No questions Ask Your domain is always all real numbers on these guys. The arrows are pointing up, so that means that my range is gonna be Y is greater than or equal to. Now this time, remember, my um, range is always the K part of my vertex, so three is gonna be the smallest Y value that I have because that's where that vertex is. Okay, guess what? I think you guys can do D if uh, you, you know, if you're not sure, it's okay, but give it a try. You can do it. Um, go ahead and pause your video and try D. All right, there's my graph on D. Um, remember, there's no number in there for H, so you gotta put a zero, and then your K is negative two. Um, domain is that easy point on your test, and then your range, those Y's are getting bigger, so go ahead and check your work. If you have questions, you can ask your teacher tomorrow in class. Number five. Number five, we're kind of switching things up a little bit. Well, we're challenging ourselves. For our H and our K, guess what? There's no numbers there, no pluses, no minuses. So we're gonna start at the OG vertex. Our vertex is gonna be zero, zero, and that is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a dot at zero, zero. Now three is my A value. This time we're gonna either stretch it or compress it, and we're gonna talk about which one is which. So I am gonna go up three, one, two, three, over one, 
Um, I can't really go up three over one anymore. So I'm gonna go to the left now to make my V shape up three over one. And there, there's my V. Now this is a stretch because that guy got really, really, really skinny. Um, that's a stretch when your graph, is, your V is kind of skinny. My domain is going to be all real numbers because guess what? It's still getting bigger and smaller at the same time. And those arrows are pointing up. So that means my range is going to be Y is greater than or equal to zero because zero is the smallest Y that I have. E. Oh my gosh, we've got everything on E. Don't worry, we're going to do it together though. Okay, so on E, here's my H, here's my K. Remember to change your H so that negative 3 is actually going to be positive 3. And the K, keep our K, so that's positive 1. So that's my starting point, 3, 1, right there. Now, I do have an A value. My A value is 2, so that means I am going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Beautiful. Make the V shape, so I got to go the other way. Up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1. Ah, see, that wasn't even that bad. We're pros now. We got this. Okay, domain is my easy point. Always, always, all real numbers. And then that range, remember, we look at the K part of our vertex. So the arrows are pointing up. So Y is greater than or equal to 1 because those Ys are getting bigger. Okay, we got two more graphs. One of them you're going to do on your own. We're going to do number 6 together, though. All righty, look at our H and our K first. Where are we starting? Well, there's nothing in there with the X. And there's nothing outside there for K either. So it looks like we're doing OG vertex, zero, zero. Okay. Now I do have an A value and, ooh, we got a negative. Don't worry, we can handle it though. That negative just means I'm going down. So I'm going to go down one over three to the right, just so I get it right the first time. Can't really go over three to the right anymore. So why don't we go down one over three to the left this time? All right. Okay, we just kind of flattened that guy. This is a compress. So the compress happens when we have that fraction. We're smashing it down, making it kind of kind of thick. Okay, oops, I said it. Anyways, um, domain. Domain is still all real numbers, I promise. Now take a look at your range. This is the part that's a little bit different. The arrows are now pointing down. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're now gonna say Y is less than or equal to, and then what our K value is on our vertex, which is zero. See, that wasn't that bad. Okay, here we go. This is kind of your, not your test, but like how well did we do on this, okay? Go ahead and pause your video and finish F on your own. All right, there's my graph on F. So for our vertex, remember to change that positive one to a negative, change your H, keep your K. So negative one, negative four is where I started. My A value was a negative. And remember there's an invisible one in front. So we went down one over one. We didn't really get to put a whole lot of points in there, but that's okay. Domain, easy point. Range, those arrows are pointing down, so the Ys are getting smaller, so you need to put Y is less than, and then the K part of your vertex. All right, friends, that's all I got for you today. So enjoy the rest of your day. Stay tuned.